CompTIA Network Plus N10-009 Practice Exam. Questions 76 through 80. This video is part of our practice exam video series and is filled with questions that closely resemble the real exam. So are you prepared to test your knowledge? Great, let's begin. Question 76. A network engineer is troubleshooting excessive interference in a newly installed CAT8 cabling system. The cables were properly routed, but connectivity tests show poor performance. Which of the following should the engineer perform first? The answer is A. Verify keystone jacks are wrapped with copper tape. CAT8 cables are engineered for high-speed data transmission and require proper shielding to minimize crosstalk and interference. To ensure effective shielding, the keystone jacks must be wrapped with copper foil tape before termination. This step is essential for maintaining proper grounding and shield continuity, which helps preserve signal integrity and prevent performance degradation. Without the shielding, the cable may experience increased noise, leading to higher error rates, reduced speeds, and overall network instability. Question 77. A company is deploying new voice over IP phones, some of which support HD video calls. The network engineer is concerned that network congestion could degrade call performance if bandwidth usage spikes. Which of the following configurations should the network engineer implement to ensure overall network performance? The answer is B. Implement traffic rate limits. Traffic rate limits help regulate bandwidth usage across a network by setting maximum data rates for specific traffic types, or VLANs. This prevents a single application, such as HD voice over IP calls, from consuming excessive bandwidth and degrading overall network performance. By enforcing these limits, network congestion is reduced, latency is minimized, and critical applications receive the necessary resources to function efficiently. Rate limiting also enhances security by mitigating the impact of potential traffic spikes or network misuse. Question 78. A virtual machine has an IPv4 address of 169.254.10.10 and can communicate with other local systems, but is unable to access external addresses on the internet. Which of the following is the most likely root cause? The answer is D. The DHCP server is offline. An IP address starting with 169.254 indicates that the system has assigned itself an automatic private IP addressing or a PIPA address. This happens when a DHCP server is unavailable or unresponsive. The APIPA address allows local communication within the same subnet, but does not provide a default gateway, meaning the device cannot reach external networks, including the internet. If this issue is encountered, the first troubleshooting step is to verify whether the DHCP server is online, properly configured, and reachable from the affected system. Question 79. A company wants to determine the maximum acceptable amount of data loss it can tolerate in the event of a system failure. Which of the following metrics should be used to establish this threshold? The answer is C. RPO. RPO, or Recovery Point Objective, defines the maximum acceptable amount of data loss measured in time before a disruption occurs. It helps organizations determine how often backups should be taken to minimize data loss in case of a failure. For example, if an RPO is set to one hour, backups should occur at least every hour to ensure minimal data loss. RPO is a key factor in business continuity planning and disaster recovery strategies. Question 80. A company needs to securely connect its branch offices over the internet while ensuring data encryption and integrity. Which of the following technologies provides the most secure site-to-site -site connectivity? The answer is D, IPsec. IPsec, short for Internet Protocol Security, is the most secure method for establishing site-to-site -site connectivity as it provides encryption, authentication, and data integrity at the network layer. It ensures that all transmitted data is protected from eavesdropping, tampering, and unauthorized access. It is commonly used in VPNs to create encrypted tunnels between remote offices, allowing organizations to securely exchange data while mitigating security threats. So, did any of these questions give you a tough time? Don't worry if they did. It's all part of the learning process. Luckily, Certification Synergy has a wealth of free video content at your disposal. To stay connected with our latest IT learning resources, just give a quick click on the subscribe button.
This simple action ensures you're always updated about our newest video releases. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.